For many years, we had this idea of creating a magical realist documentary. We felt that the people that we interact with in our daily lives are actually the ones who shape us and our society and our values more than anyone else, but we don't normally have the filmic language to express what makes them amazing. My name is Alain Bogarin. My name is Jonathan Bogarin. And we're the co-directors of 306 Hollywood. When our grandmother passed away, we realized once we had a grandma, now we have our stuff. And it seemed like this completely ironic situation that you could have this amazing person who lives and breathes and you can talk to, and then all of a sudden you have junk. We grew up in New York, but our father's Venezuelan, and we spent a lot of our summers traveling to Venezuela to visit him. And I think that within the world of Latin America, looking at magic as part of daily life is totally normal. Here's another way that we could deal with nonfiction. Here's another way that we could explore how we actually emotionally handle what happens to us as well as actually, you know, live it. There were two criteria that we set for ourselves in making the film. One is that every single story that we told had to be visual, had to be visible, because everyone was dead, everything was gone. The other criteria that we gave for ourselves is that every single moment in the film, whether it was an emotional moment or a conceptual moment, had to be represented as a metaphor. And we began to borrow from all these different art forms to inform the language of the film because the stuff itself, it actually looked really crappy. When someone passes away, if you go back to the house, it's completely different. But you, for example, the audience, might never have been to that house. We created a scale model of our grandmother's house. The whole goal was to say everything is in fact the same, but also entirely different. This film was in many ways our journey of trying to understand, well, can we offer another way of looking at grief? How do we take what still exists of someone who's gone and hold on to it and explore it and recognize that the past is in fact still part of the present?